Dr. Andy Galpin here, and welcome back to 5-Minute Physiology, a series where I take complicated physiological, strength and conditioning, nutrition topics, and I break them down for you in less than 5 minutes, or roughly 5 minutes. Today's topic is the physiology of fat loss. Now, have you ever sat back and wondered how fat loss actually occurs? What I mean by that is, how is it actually possible for me to lose weight? And imagine that my belly stuck out to here and I went through some training or nutrition program and now it's gone. Where did that physical space in the world go to? Like somehow I had to lose it or get rid of it, right? Now most people would just say, well, it's diet and exercise. Well, no, no, that, that's actually what you do. Today I want to talk about not necessarily the methods and habits you pick, but the physiology of the adaptation. I think if we do that, you can understand a lot better what to actually do. So how's, how's it actually happening? What's occurring that allows you to lose that fat? Well, it's certainly not coming from sweat. We don't chronically lose fat that way. It's not coming from urine either. You don't really pee out fat or you don't poop it out for that matter. But it's getting out of your or off of your body somehow. Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, do something for me. On the count of three, I want you to take a big, deep breath in, hold it, and let it go when I tell you to. Ready? One, two, three, in. <gasps> Breathe out. Congratulations, you all just got a little tiny bit skinny. What's actually happening there? Because that's right, you heard, me, you heard me correctly. You lose fat by breathing. Let me start you back at the beginning here. Everything is made of long carbon chains. All right, the fat on your body, the carbohydrate in your body, you can see from these pictures I'm representing the bread is carbohydrate, the fat is the cheese, and the protein is the burger. I know those aren't exactly what's in those things, but you get the idea there. Well, carbohydrates, whether they're in your body or if they're in the food you're consuming, it's the same thing are six carbon chains for the most part. Glucose is a six carbon chain. Fat is also just a big long carbon chain. It's got a lot more carbons in it, but the point is they're still the same. So I'll use this little image over here, this five carbon chain to represent no matter what macronutrient we're talking about, but let's talk about fat in particular. Okay, so what happens is you take a big deep breath in, right? <gasps> you breathe in primarily O2, oxygen and you breathe out primarily co2 the difference is carbon where does that carbon come from well it actually comes from your fat storage so whether we're talking about the again carbon you're eating or, or breathing out what what you're really trying to do or what you all you need to do to lose fat is to consume less carbon than you breathe out Right? So, of course, this is why it's important to have an excellent diet and an excellent exercise program to effectively lose fat because this is what's actually happening. So imagine these carbon chains were a, a, a big piece of fat in your body like this. This picture over here is five pounds of human fat. This is five pounds of muscle. So let's say we want to get rid of that fat five-pound pad. And we know it's just a big long chain of carbons represented by this right here. What I'm going to do is break off one of those carbons. And your body isn't going to let carbon float around there free playing. So it's going to have to deal with it. But because I broke that bond, whenever we break the chemical bond here, we have a net release of energy. Okay, so we use that energy to then make a, a thin molecule called ATP. We use that to power exercise or whatever else our body wants or needs energy for. Okay, so that's an extragonic reaction. We get a net result of some energy, but we're left with this free-floating carbon, which, as I mentioned, we don't necessarily like. So you breathe in that O2 because you know CO2 plays very, or carbon plays very, very well with oxygen to form CO2. So you breathe in O2, breathe out CO2, and that carbon literally was your fat pad. Now that process of breaking off a carb and getting a net re release of energy, folks, that's exactly what metabolism is. Okay, so it looks something like this. Again, you've got that free-floating carbon. It binds to some oxygen. You exhale it and get rid of it. Now because 
my fat pad used to be this big, which was, say, five carbons long, even though, obviously, we know the answer is like five million carbons. Little by little, as we continue to chunk off those carbons, what's happening to the size of our fat pad? It's literally getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we'll simply continue this for as long as possible. All right? So we're either, again, consuming less carbon or increasing the rate at which we kick it out. So if you were to finish on this idea of, okay, so uh, we'll talk nutrition in a separate talk, but I need to eat less carbon. That's great. Not carbs. Remember carbon, which is in fat and carbohydrate and protein for that matter. So I simply need to ingest less food, period. But for the exercise portion of it, if we think about it this way, we know what's the best type of exercise for fat loss? Is it something like over here in the corner that's, say, long duration, your classic cardio? Is it something maybe more like this in the middle, something maybe like circuit training or intervals? Or how about something over here, maybe something more like true strength training or heavy lifting? Well, the answer is, and this is actually the same answer for the diet question, is the most important factor is adherence. In other words, what are you or the client you're working with most likely to actually do? That's the program you want to put them on. Now, of course, the reality of it is a good program, an ideal program, probably has a combination of all three of these, at least at some level. But you're going to tweak the combination based on personal preference. What are you more likely to do? Because it's all simply about burning carbon. Now, in another video, we'll talk that, hey, not all three of these modes are exactly equal. But at a basic level, when we're talking about working with the masses, let's get them moving because as long as they're breathing, they're going to be losing fat. If that excited you or you want to know some more information about it, definitely check out the 25-minute physiology and the 55-minute physiology of fat loss. Those are available as well. If you have any questions, let me know on social. If not, enjoy. Share it with your friends. Let's keep passing the information. Let's keep inspiring people to reach their health and fitness goals through fun education and other things like this. So we'll see you next time, and thanks for the support.